Great. Work session topic number two is Red Gate Park, presentation on the three site plan concepts and next steps. Uh, welcome, Mr. Chestnut and Mr. McGilloway. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. I appreciate this opportunity to continue our conversation and the, the process of reimagining Red Gate Park. Uh, believe it or not, it, as intense as the process has been, it's kind of fun too, uh, being uh, brainstorming and, and thinking what would be possible. Um, so uh, with that, um, Nelson is going to run the video or the uh, slides for me. Nelson, can you share the first one, please? Yes, uh, I need uh, permission. There we go. Bear with me one second. And you could go, once you get it going, you can go ahead and go to the purpose, the second slide, please. The three concepts that are before you tonight were developed following the October 18th mayor and council discussion, during which staff provided an update on the planning process and presented the 10 top amenities to be considered for inclusion in the park. The key sources for those amenities were this statistically valid survey as part of the Recreation and Parks Department's strategic plan and of the community survey that was conducted as part of this planning process. In each of the concepts, you will find the identified amenities in varying sizes and locations, exemplifying options for how the park might be reimagined. As always, we are approaching the process with an eye to conservation, responsible allocation of city resources, and the high standards for levels of service that are our hallmark. Next slide, please, thank you. What we're hoping tonight is that mayor and council will discuss what you like about the concepts, what you don't like, things you might want to add or delete, and to generally give us direction for modifying these concepts before we take them back out to the community and our key stakeholders. Ultimately, of course, at the very end of the process, the goal will be to have arrived at a consensus as to what amenities will be included in the reimagined Redgate Park, assuring the active passive mix identified by the mayor and council and serving to create the destination park we all envision. Next slide, thank you. As you will see in each of the three concepts, at least 75% of the park property remains passive in nature. And in one of them, 82% remains passive. And again, these are just concepts. We're looking forward to your additions, subtractions, tweaks, modifications, dressing up, um, and, and we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Um, what I'd like to do now is introduce Tom McGilloway, a principal with Mayhem Reichel Associates, who's our consultant for this project, and I'll hand over the reins to him for now. Thank you, Tim, and uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. Uh, Nelson, we can go to the next slide. Um, and next one. So um, I'm going to go through the concepts. Before I go through the three concept alternatives, I'm going to just give a brief overview of some of the things that informed these concepts in addition to what Tim had indicated with the, the community survey um, and input from that. So first we looked at a number of existing site conditions, the landform, steep slopes, uh, circulation and utilities, and all of these went into place to inform where uh, elements amenities can fit on the site. Next slide. Um, probably one of the, uh, the couple that are the most informative are landform. Um, there's a ridge, it's shown in the darker red color, a ridge line through the center of the site. Uh, that's the higher land, but then we also have these natural bowls. And that informed a lot of where utilities, can, amenities can and can't go. Next slide. Um, also the existing vegetation. We want to work around and preserve as much of the existing vegetation as possible, whether it's a woodland grove or uh, open areas with specimen trees in there. So we've been working around those. Next slide. And then also, um, if you go back one, the paved, uh, the pathway and the circulation system. Uh, we have those of you that are familiar with Redgate know there's a lot of steep slopes on the site. Um, so we want to look at pathways and how can uh, we work with the landform to get pathways as uh, as, as flat as possible and to make connections that would be easily accessible to people with um, all abilities. Next slide. And then we also looked at there's some areas, some sensitive areas that uh, 
we can't build upon, such as the pond areas, uh, forest conservation easements, and drainage areas as well. Next slide. Um, and then we also are limited to where we can access the site. We have the main entrance off of Avery Road, and then we're all, we've also been looking at a secondary entrance off of Taft Court uh, through the sixth Taft Court property. Um, and we've done this to different degrees in each of the concept alternatives. Next slide. So um, the site amenities, this is the list of the top 10 amenities from the October 18th meeting. Uh, the next series of slides are just some images. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly, but I want uh, to plant these images in your mind. It's just uh, some precedent images from other parks, other communities of how some of, what, how some of these uh, amenities might look. Uh, again, we're at the master plan stage, so we're not designing any of these. Uh, so don't... Uh, think too hard about the specific designs of the images you see, but rather to get a flavor of what these amenities are. And then as we go through the concept plans, it might be easier to visualize uh, as we talk about each of these amenities. Next slide. Um, a, a very uh, important program element is the trail network. And that trail network is going to include a variety of trails, such as paved trails that you see on this slide. Next natural surface trails, uh, boardwalks, there might be stepping stones over some of the water crossings. Um, and these are, uh, and then there could be, uh, next slide, that's uh, boardwalks. Um, there may be some bridges crossing some of the steep slopes and drainage areas. There may be some platforms overlooking some of the ponds or overlooking some of the, the valleys on the site. Next slide. Um, a very significant part of the property, as Tim had mentioned, is going to be uh, passive space. And uh, this is uh, what we're calling natural habitat and arboretum. We know this uh, park is all, uh, very popular with uh, people that enjoy the natural area and the birders. So this uh, will include meadows and wetlands, uh, woodlands. Next slide. Forest preservation areas, um, and then also new forest areas where some open areas might be translated into forest. We also see great opportunities for interpretation in environmental education here, and not only in the areas that are going to be passive, but they could also be um, incorporated into uh, some of the more active areas as well. Next slide. Um, and then uh, we heard a lot uh, in the survey and in interest of pollinator gardens. Again, this is something that could be in the passive areas, but they could also, any of the landscaping that's near some of the active park elements could also incorporate uh, uh, native planting and pollinators in these educational components. Next slide. Um, the arboretum and displays, uh, some of these arboretum elements could be in the natural woodlands and uh, the very natural areas. Others could be out in some of the open lawns uh, where the, the trees are displayed, specimen trees are displayed. Next slide. Um, and you'll notice in the concepts, we have an area called the lawn. Um, this would be an area that uh, would not, it would be passive, but not necessarily uh, meadow. Uh, it could be an open lawn area. That could be a canvas for some of the arboretum specimens. It could accentuate the landform like you see in some of these images. And if we go to the next slide, the lawn area could also be an area for unstructured play and gathering uh, to complement some of the areas that are more structured and programmed. Next slide. Um, picnic areas are included, and these would include all of the concepts include a large pavilion um, and two small pavilions as well as a shared restroom facility, and then opportunities for uh, volleyball, playground pot lots, and open flexible areas associated with these picnic grounds. Uh, playgrounds are included. Uh, some will include some more traditional playground equipment that you say here, um, shade and color. Others can be include more nature-based programming and playground equipment like you see in this slide. In the next slide, um, and then uh, some areas that might have more adventure play. And a very important thing is that the playground has as multi-generational appeal and appeal to people uh, with all abilities. 
Um, an amphitheater is a significant component. Um, the concepts vary greatly in the size of the amphitheater, the smallest being 1,500 with 250 fixed seats uh, and, and the rest lawn, and then the largest amphitheater being 3,500 seating capacity with um, 1,000 fixed seats and the 2,500 lawn seats. Uh, we're also looking at opportunities for secondary uh, more informal amphitheater that might be integrated more into nature and some of the natural topography. Next slide. Um, and then again, some images, you know, the amphitheater, not a, uh, one of the things we want to look at is how it could be flexible, that not it's not only used during events, but how the stage area could also be a platform for gatherings um, and things uh, other than performances. Next slide. Um, some more images, the images on the right show some of the more informal amphitheaters, how they can be integrated into just a grassy slope or in, even into a wooded, wooded area to really uh, take advantage of nature. Next slide. Um, a dog park is a significant component of the plan. Uh, most of this would be a large grassy area that's fenced in. Uh, there'd be an area for small dogs and log, uh, large dogs. Uh, some fencing, uh, and then also some accessible ADA compliant pathways and a shelter. Next slide. Um, outdoor recreation fields. Um, the schemes uh, vary. Uh, one scheme shows one field surrounded by a 400 meter running track. Um, at this point, it's not, it, it could be natural turf or artificial turf. It could be lit or unlit. Um, but then we also have a um, two schemes that show a secondary field that's um, uh, lighted or unlighted, and it would not have a track, it would be just a, a, another, a secondary recreation field. Um, and this is an example of one of those, how it's really uh, the field, it's a, while it's a recreation field, it's really integrated into the overall natural, open, the open space system. Next slide. A multi-generational community center. Again, these are not specific designs, but just examples. Um, in the three concepts, they range in size from 18,000 to 30,000 square feet and could include a number of amenities and rooms and features within the center. An important thing is that there'd be an outdoor terrace that really, and some window areas that really integrate the site into the indoor space and vice versa. That is very integrated with the natural amenities of the site. Next slide. Outdoor game and play spaces, um, volleyball, it might be ping pong table um, or other similar elements. Uh, some of these might be placeholders, so allow these elements to emerge as interests arise in specific games. Next slide. And then finally, um, you know, we have to ha recognize the realities of parking and roadways to access some of these. We want to integrate these into the site as much as possible, uh, the terrace, the parking lot, so it fits with the landform, and then also integrate stormwater management into the parking areas uh, so the, the, the parking is really integrated into the landscape. Uh, we have uh, existing parking. We have opportunities to share parking with Six Taft Court on evenings and weekends, and then we also are showing opportunities where new parking could be developed if needed. Next slide. And then, um, and then some examples, there's opportunities to incorporate um, pervious pavement in some of these areas, integrate in the parking into some of the natural landscape as much as possible to minimize its visual impact, but still be accessible to uh, the amenities it serves. Next slide. And then finally, uh, environmental site design, stormwater management, um, use of you know, potential for green roofs, rain gardens, bioswales. And the important thing here is that these are integrated into the landscape design. They're not just a utilitarian feature, but they're really integrated into the design, whether it's the playground at the bottom image or into a parking lot, and then opportunities for interpretive signage to educate uh, park users as to the benefit of these, these features. Next slide. So uh, we're gonna now go through the concepts. And so if you could keep some of that imagery in your mind as we go through each of these. Um, a couple, if you go to the next slide, Nelson. Um, this is the existing site. Um, so the dark green is existing tree cover and wooded areas. 
the lighter green is what's currently lawn or meadow area where the, the golf course was and most of the trails are. And then the blue or the pond areas. Um, and as I said earlier, we have to layer into this the steep slopes, the, the unbuildable areas, the landform and everything. And all these will form the concepts. We go to the next slide. Um, all of the, and, and all of the concepts before I get into each one are really, um, they're very similar um, in terms of where most of the active uses are and passive. They differ in where, uh, they differ from concept to concept and where maybe some specific amenities are located or the extent and size of the amenities. So we start each concept uh, plan showing this diagram, the lighter areas are active areas, the darker green are passive. So with passive, we mean trails, the natural open space, natural habitat, meadows, um, open lawn area, uh, the active being rec fields, parking areas, the community center, picnic areas, and the dog park. So in this first concept one, as Tim had mentioned, uh, this is the most passive, uh, or it has the most passive space of the three concepts with 82% uh, passive and about 18% um, inactive park elements. Next slide. Um, so what I'm gonna do, since there's a lot of information on this slide, I'm gonna show this overall plan first, and then we'll go into uh, enlargements of certain sections. We'll start, we'll first do the top half of the park, the middle part of the park, and the lower part of the park, uh, so we can zoom in and see more information. But with concept one, some of the differentiating features of this concept is that um, you know, the, the, the passive area down in the lower left corner of the park where the two large ponds uh, is, that's probably the most extensive. It's all passive around those pond areas on, on all sides of them. This plan has the smallest amphitheater. Um, it's located on the north side of the park and I'll show that in more detail. It's a, um, 1,500 seats. It has the smallest community center at 18,000 square feet. We're showing one rectangular sports field and track. It has the largest passive lawn area. And then most of the amenities are accessed from the main entrance. Uh, the rec field is accessed from sixth half court, but everything else is accessed from the main entrance. And we're showing about 4.2 miles of paved trails um, and we're showing on the plan about, you know, some nature trails, but actually there'll be a lot more nature trails than what we're showing at this point. We'll be getting into that level of detail when we start to refine to a preferred concept. Next slide. So now we're at the top of uh, concept one, the top portion of the site. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I might say that in all three concepts, um, the top part of the site, the eastern side of the site, and the bottom part of the site, the southern part, are all passive. They just have different degrees at the level of passive nature. So what you see, the area outlined in dark green is all passive, like natural habitat and arboretum. The brighter green outlined area designated by number three is the lawn. So if you think of some of those images I showed on the lawn area, uh, that's along a ridge top where we're showing that. So it'd be mostly flat, fairly level and accessible with a series of pathway loops. The solid brown lines represent existing pathways that we could utilize. The dashed uh, brown lines represent some connections um, that would be under, where we think could be uh, under 5%. So that would have, uh, this would be a fairly level pathway connection or switchbacks that allow you to navigate the slopes. Um, and then, uh, so let's go to the next slide, which is the middle section of the site. So this one, you could see both entrances, the main entrance off to the right. Um, in all the concepts we're showing that it's right now that entrance is kind of awkward. It's at an acute angle. So we're showing a realignment of that coming into the site for better site distance and accessibility. Um, then it follows the existing roadway up to the existing parking lot, which is designated with the letter B. Um, and then we also show coming in from Taft Court to the left hand are drawing, um, reorganizing some of that parking um, so that then 
we can connect into what we're showing as parking area C that would access the sports field and track. In all of the concepts we're showing the sports field and track in this general location, it's the flattest part of the site. And it's the amenity that requires the largest land area. Some other things that you see here, the community center identified, identified by number four is fairly close to where the existing clubhouse is. And that's the same on all concepts as well because of the access to existing utilities. It's a high point, it's centrally, centrally located to all amenities. Uh, we have the amphitheater. Again, this is the smallest amphitheater. It's in a natural bowl formation on the north side of the community center. So it looks off into this natural habitat and arboretum area. And then we're showing some expanded parking along the ridge top off of the existing uh, parking lot that services the amphitheater, the community center, the playground. Uh, we're showing the dog park um, in this scheme and the next one to the right, it's a low area adjacent to the existing parking lot and then buffered by some of the natural habitat uh, to the east. Um, in all the concepts, we're also showing a lawn area at the main entrance. Uh, if you recall from the slide I showed and when you drive out to the site, when you enter into the site, you have this wonderful vista across the open area. And we think it's important not to put any fencing or visually intrusive elements, program elements in this area, but to preserve this, this view across the open lawn and really so that the park's image is presented as a mostly passive space. And if we go to the next slide, and then in this next slide, the southern portion of the site, again, we show the trail network and solid lines uh, as existing trails and dashed as uh, connecting uh, ones that are uh, fairly level or under 5% gradient. Um, and then in the southern part, while most of the south is uh, arboretum and, and natural habitat, we're showing the picnic area integrated into this with a small playground and then also some small per parking areas to access those picnic areas. Um, you can see um, underneath on the base drawing, the darker green areas uh, is again, the existing tree masses so we're trying to nestle these parking areas and picnic areas in and amongst and in and between these tree groves um, and, and working with that existing vegetation layout in addition to the landform. So let's go to uh, concept number two. Uh, concept two, uh, we have um, actually both concept two and three, we have 75% passive space and 25% active. So we have a little more active uh, elements in both of these concepts. Uh, you can see that generally um, the active and passive are in the same areas before, but we're showing a little more active areas internal to the site. We go to the next slide. Uh, again, this is an overview of the entire concept plan. Uh, similarities you'll see is that uh, the north, east, and southern portions of the site are mostly passive. And then the active uses are along the ridge lines in the center of uh, in the center of the site and along the western boundary of the site um, near Taft Court. This has this concept has the largest amphitheater, 3,500 seats, a thousand fixed, 2,500 lawn. It's sited um, in the front part of the site, so it overlooks uh, the audience would overlook the ponds as they look toward the stage. The amphitheater looks toward the ponds. We have two rectangular sports fields here, one with the track and another just a uh, sports field. Uh, the amenity areas are pretty much evenly, or access to the amenity areas is pretty much evenly distributed between the main entrance and the six half court entrance. Um, we do have a connecting road between the two. This is the only concept that shows that so that during main events, you would be able to get drive through the entire, through and across the site from one entrance to the other. The idea is that these would be gated though, so that um, during day, on an everyday basis, you would not be able to have through traffic cut through the site. It would mainly be during large events at the amphitheater to help manage traffic uh, ingress and egress. And the next slide, and so now we'll do the same thing. We'll go through the top portion of the site. 
you can see most of the top portion of the site is again natural habitat and arboretum. This is where you have some of the steepest slopes and areas that are hard to access. But you see we have um, the, the central lawn area also follows the ridge line, but we included as part of that lawn area a second sports field. Um, so that's along a ridge top where it could be. Uh, there's not many areas where we could put sports fields on this site because of the grade. So this one is on top of a ridge top where it minimized minimize the grading. And we have some parking along that side that we've accessed off a of Taft court to access that. Um, I'm going to go, if we go to the next slide, Nelson, I think we'll see uh, more. This is where we see the main entrance and the secondary entrance following again the existing roadway uh, down along that entrance, that front lawn at the entrance. And then you could see a dash black line that cuts across the site between the amphitheater and the existing and the new parking areas. And then you can see two black dots, or actually three black dots that are gates. So the idea would be that during non-event times or non-significant event times, these gates would be closed so that cars cannot drive through the site and pedestrians would have un, um, unencumbered access across that roadway between the two gates so that those passive areas would connect to each other. Again, we have the community center. This is the largest community center at 30,000 square feet. It's in the general area on top of the hill. The playground area, the play area is divided into two areas and, and, and near the community center, like all of the concepts. And then the amphitheater you can see is overlooking the lake, the stage. Audience would have views across to the stage and across the lake in the background. Um, and then you can see that we, because we have the amphitheater more in the front, we're showing more parking accessed off of sixth half court that would allow um, events, uh, uh, during events, some convenient parking to these, to the amphitheater. I, I might add also that in, in regards to parking on all of these concepts, we're showing the areas that could work for parking. We're showing more parking than we need because uh, there's going to be a, a kind of a little art and craft to how we actually determine the parking because we uh, we know we could share some with six Taft Court in the evenings and weekends, but there are a lot of existing businesses along Taft Court that uh, there may be opportunities to share parking with those empty parking lots in evenings and weekends too. So we don't need to have all the parking on within the park. Um, so we're, we're looking at different areas that work with the landform and with the amenities, and we'll be fine tuning how that parking actually fleshes out. If we go to this next slide, the south portion of the site, again, mostly passive. Um, you can see uh, the amphitheater relating to the pond. Uh, this scheme we do, again, have the picnic areas and some parking areas associated with this passive area to the south. Um, interwoven with the existing trees um, and the idea that the, you know, in this, this scheme, the picnic areas could interface with the amphitheater. So people might have a picnic event and then tie it in with an event at the amphitheater. There might be some joint programming with that as well as access to the nature areas. And I would like to just um, reiterate that in the natural habitat arboretum areas, we would envision more of the nature trails, the natural surface trails that we're showing. Um, a lot of those tend to happen over time as you know, as you see how people are using the park or where desire lines are. So we want to accommodate that sensitively to the site. Okay, now if we go to the next slide, the third concept. Um, again, this shows 75% um, passive, 25% active. Um, this one has a little more active areas in the kind of the north central part of the site and fewer along the center south ridge area. But in terms of proportion of active and passive, it's the same as the second scheme. Next slide. Some differentiating features in this. Um, again, the amphitheater overlooks the pond area. It's in a slightly different location than in the previous plan. But this is the mid-sized amphitheater of 2,500 seats with 500 fixed and the, the rest in the lawn. This also has the mid-sized community center at 25,000 square feet. Again, located in the general same area, but uh, slightly uh, different location on that site 
Uh, the playground is all to the sort of the rear of that. Um, this also has two rectangular sports fields. Again, the main field and the track is located in the vicinity next to near Sixth Half Court. The secondary field is old, more central to the site, also along a ridge top. Um, and then the picnic areas to the north. Um, this scheme, another differentiating factor is the dog park is separated uh, from the other park elements. It's, it's at the furthest southern part of the site. So if we go to the next slide, which focuses on the top portion of the site, you can start to see the, the relationship of the two sports fields. We have some parking following the landform between the sports fields. So it's uh, the, the fields have accessibility to parking. Um, each field has accessibility to parking. We're also showing in this scheme the picnic area to the northern end of the site versus the southern end of the site. So it interfaces with not only the sports fields, but also the natural habitat and arboretum to the north. And um, as we showed in the last scheme where it showed the opportunity for the picnic areas to inter interface with the main amphitheater, in this scenario, the picnic areas have an opportunity to interface with the sports field. So there could be some co-programming among those elements. If we go to the next slide, the central part of the site. Again, you can see access from the main entrance that would take you to the community center and the playground and the new, some of the new parking that extends off of the existing parking area that's located in B. Uh, we show the amphitheater in a slightly different location but still in the general location is the last scheme overlooking the lake. And in this concept, we're showing more parking terraced on the hillside along the western boundary of the site so that it's um, you know, more conducive to an event in the amphitheater um, and traffic leaving through Taft Court. Uh, this scheme also shows roughly equal distribution between amenities that are accessed from the main entrance or from six Taft Court although it probably skews a little more, a higher uh, parking access from the sixth half court side. Um, the playground on this scheme is to the north side of the community center overlooking the natural, it's on a hilltop overlooking the natural habitat in Arboretum. And then we have a smaller lawn area um, to the north of the community center, uh, the passive lawn that links the community center, the play area and the sports field. And then if we go to the next slide, the southern portion of the site, you can see, again, mostly natural and passive area, but we have the dog park over on this site. The small parking area is along the ridge top, and the dog park would be um, a fenced area that is mostly on some of the existing open areas, but would also encompass some of the, the wooded areas um, uh, through the center of that area as well. Um, the, again, it's on a ridge top, so it would have more accessible pathways uh, located to this, and it would locate this amenity, you know, kind of the furthest away from some of the other amenity areas. And then lastly, if we go, so where the next two slides, we'll just compare the three side by side so that you can see that in all three concepts, uh, the passive areas are roughly in the same area, the north, east, and south, and uh, just different degrees of how much is is where in each scheme and the active areas are more centrally located following the ridge lines of the topography where these will be more accessible by both people and by cars and the more uh, unbuildable areas with the steeper slopes and vegetation and some of the uh, water features and natural drain or porch corridors would be remain in the passive space. And then the next slide that we'll leave up while we have questions and discussion shows the three concept plans side by side. So again, a lot of similarities among them. Uh, and you know, we envision that the, 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 the draft plan or the, the, the final plan is not gonna be one of one or another of these concepts. It's more likely gonna be a combination of some elements from concept one and maybe some elements from concept three. So uh, some of these are mix and match as to if you will. That I'll uh, open up to questions and or Tim, if you want to add anything. Yeah, if, if I could please, and thank you, Tom. I know that, 
that's a lot of information you're throwing at me on council. Um, just to repeat myself from the beginning, what we really hope to hear from you guys tonight is obviously your uh, um, overall response. Do you, you know, are we close to what you were envisioning or looking for? Um, if not, where are we missing? But very specifically, what would be the most helpful for us moving forward in the process is if you could ID what amenities you like, ID where you like those amenities to be, and ID how large you would like those amendments to be. We've shown you lots of different variations here. So the more you can help us along those lines, uh, the, the easier the process will be going to the next step. That being said, before I open it up for questions, I want to make sure you know that the entire team is here. Uh, they're on tonight. That's representatives from Planning and Development Services, that's representatives from Public Works, and of course, Recreation and Parks. And Tom will be here. We're not letting him go yet either. Great, thank you, Mr. Chestnut, and thank you, Mr. Uh, McGilloway, for and all the team for all the work. Council Member Dr. Miles. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thanks, staff, and our uh, consultant team for bringing this forward. Uh, I think it was a great presentation. It gave us a lot to chew on. I'll just open by saying my my personal preference after sifting through not only I shouldn't say personal preference, my the preference after both reading uh, the material getting through emails from constituents um, is to think about less is more, meaning I prefer a concept like one to minimize active areas as we can always consider building later depending on demand. But oftentimes once something is built, it's hard to turn, turn it back into something that's a little more passive. So that's my general recommendation. I do like all the elements. It kind of brings up memories of we regional part where there's like this botanical garden and, you know, more active play areas. So this is quite small. However, I don't think we have to do everything. I think we should just do a few things well. So I kind of like the minimalist footprint of number one, relatively speaking. I also like it for from another reason uh, in terms of ongoing maintenance. The more facilities there are, the more uh, the city will have to pay to maintain them. Um, granted that even passive areas have to be maintained to some extent um, when there are other buildings and infrastructure that do require more maintenance. Um, so again, I'm about minimalist. I think things to consider are several fold. One, I would certainly advocate um, uh, that there be um, ability for bikes to get up there easily. Um, I oftentimes bike along the Rock, Rock Creek Trail up by Lake Needwood and a road is tricky on, on the bike once you get off of that paved uh, trail off Norbit. So being mindful about creating uh, safe ways for non-motorized uh, sorts of transportation to access the park would be important. Two, I, I like that you all moved the Avery Road entrance uh, further north. I would encourage moving it even further north because if there is a major event there, you know, traffic could back up along Norbit, making left into um, onto to Avery to get into the park. Uh, and then, you know, first and fo um, foremost, just making sure the park is accessible for all. As we know, for people who've gone up there, taking a the stroller up there, it's, it's, it's challenging given the var variations of topography that were mentioned earlier. But making sure all trails, all uh, buildings, all amenities are accessible to all um, is uh, a high priority. But again, my, I, my, my overall sentiment is to do less. I like concept one. Now I'll end it there. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Ashton. Thank you. I wanted to start out with a question that I received from several members of the community about um, the process. If you could just, some folks have said, is this, is this the last time I can provide feedback? Can you just help to, you know, inform folks what the process will be and, and how they can continue to provide feedback? Of course. And Nelson, if you would forward a couple slides, please. Here you go. Um, so the process moving forward is we will take Mayor and Council's comments and direction tonight. We will incorporate those into the concepts, whatever that means. Uh, and then we will be going back out to the public. We're waiting until tonight and after tonight to finalize exactly what that process is going to look like. But we are going to take it back out to the public, including reaching out to some of our stakeholder groups like Ready, like the Boards Commission's. Uh, those things. But, so we, I can't answer you specifically as in how we're going to do it, but after tonight, we will make those decisions based on information we hear from you guys. Thank you. And if I may, a couple of things, um, I'll, I'll talk about concepts in a minute, but 
one feature that I didn't see that I, I think could be a nice add for this is uh, to add a, a community garden area. So the city does have a variety of community gardens on the west side of Rockville uh, in terms of a space where people can actually grow their own vegetables. And that has been very popular. I know that there's some wait list at some of our community gardens. And so I um, thought that it might be nice to include a community garden here for our east side of Rockville. Um, I wanted to echo the comments of my colleague on just really thinking about all different kinds of people and how they would access it. And I also thought about um, the, you know, there are some areas where you may not know that it's not easy to access from an ADA perspective. And so I just hope that as we think about all of these concepts that we have some very good signage of people of differing abilities. I know that some trails and I, I love to hike and I love to go on, on this one in particular um, there are some places that are a bit more steep and maybe you can just signal, you know, which is more complex versus not um, so that people can make a choice ahead of heading all the way out there. Um, another feature that I didn't see spoken out about per se, but this is a great opportunity in terms of being environmentally friendly in terms of either um, solar canopy, solar on the roof, if we do the community center as well as some EV. So that's not a feature yet mentioned, but I'd love to see one here. Uh, I'm sure there's no supply prize there. Um, and, and, you know, worked really hard to ensure that this is a park. And I thank all the residents who helped to make that possible, as well as our staff and, and my colleagues, that this will remain a park. It's just what is in the park. Uh, so I wanted to also get that out there. Um, there is a piece that um, we have seen that there are well over 100 plus species of birds there. And there have been some um, displays that I know someone has taken some beautiful photos and put up on an ad hoc basis, but I wonder if there might be a more uh, semi-permanent or permanent way to display the beautiful variety of natural wildlife that we have, if that could be potentially incorporated either along the paths or I've seen it also uh, on display at the community center. So I just wanted to flag that as well. Um, there were some comments that I thought were very important in terms of thinking about access points for all the concepts and making sure that there's a way to get in or um, to connect some of the trails uh, for both walking and biking. Uh, so I wanted to flag that as well. In terms of the specific features, I did like, um, I thought concept two was, was um, overall there's a lot in concept two and it does seem to overtake some of the natural elements, the way it's clustered in that particular space in the center where that's kind of like your entree into the beauty of the space. So I, I thought concept two was a little too much, um, but I do like the ability to have a larger community center, the sizing in concept three uh, in terms of the community center specifically, I'm not speaking to the other features. Um, I did like having, um, you know, the, the multi-use for the sports field and, and track and concept one. Um, I also um, liked the amphitheater. Um, I, I would love to have a discussion on the sizing of that and how that was selected. And there are various recommendations here. Uh, so if that, I would love to understand staff's um, thought process on that. On the one hand, you can spread it out and have multiple sites uh, as in some of the concepts. On the other hand, you can um, have one that can actually be a, an attraction and both of them could potentially help to support the revenue to upkeep the natural and you know area of the park in terms of um, some of the events that may come through that would help to offset some of the cost of maintenance. Um, so I would love to hear more about that. Um, I do like the idea of the multi-generational integrated community uh, center, and I like the trails um, that you can get up to about four, four miles uh, uh, on the trails. I was curious about, and the resident actually during community check-in uh, drop-in this afternoon asked, is there a possibility to have for people to walk around the entire perimeter, or is it just on the interior? Uh, so that's another question for you. And then the last question I'll add is, what is the lawn area? And some of the concepts on the upper northern part, there is a lawn area. 
what's the rationale for that particular space? And is it to be multi-use or, you know, what were you thinking there? All right, Councilwoman Ashby. Or, Madam Mayor, do you mind if I try and answer some of the questions now or would you rather wait till the end? No, I think that's good. Go ahead. Okay. Um, as far as the amphitheater size, our primary goal there is to give you a range. And so it wasn't so much that we said, oh, if we're going to do this caliber of performer, we need this size of stage or this size of uh, audience. It was really a matter of trying to give you guys a range of options on that. Um, so the, the 3,500 is, is, that's a significant size. That would be a significant audience, um, which has several dominoes, you know, the parking lots and the shuttles and, and all of those sorts of things. Um, but that was our goal with the amphitheater, was really just to give you guys a range of options. Um, let's see, multi-generational. Yes, absolutely. That is best practices in our industry. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, whether we would have an 18,000 square foot or a 35, whatever the largest one was, 35,000 square feet. Um, you know, multi-generational really is um, state of the art in our recreation and parks industry. Then I apologize. I know there was at least one more question. The walk a bit around the entire perimeter. Ah, and Tom, yeah, you want to answer that one? Yes, um, I can. I think that's a great question. Um, it, we don't, we're not showing a pathway like right at the perimeter, but there is, um, you could essentially do a very large loop that goes around the whole, um, you know, just inside the perimeter of the park. But what we're trying to do is show that you could do a very large loop or you could divide that into smaller loops and medium sized loops. You know, we found that in park planning, uh, generally people like to walk in a circuit and not have to backtrack. Uh, but some people want to walk all four miles, others want to walk one mile or a half a mile. So what we're showing is a series that you, there's a lot of variety as to how you could uh, divide up your walkway. We also are working with where some of the existing paths are, where some of the topography allows the pathways to, to go most successfully. And I think there is also the question about what is the lawn area? Yes, thank you. That yeah. was awesome. Yes, um, the lawn area is, recall some of the images I showed, it, it would be a passive area, but it would be a usable passive area. Um, it'd be, you know, mowed fairly regularly. So you could do a, rather than an organized sport that you would do on the rectangular sports field, you could do passive Frisbee. Um, yeah, that one, right? The, 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 oh, okay. Let's go into the image. Yes, um, you could do play Frisbee. There might be some picnicking that occurs that's you know not associated with the shelter um, informal play. You know, all of the, you know most of the great parks in the world have this kind of central organizing lawn. You see it in Central Park. The bottom image here is Prospect Park in Brooklyn. Uh, this is a much larger scale than what we're showing, but it it becomes this passive organizing element that connects other park elements. We're showing it on the ridge line. So it's mostly level um, so that the pathways that you could do loops around it would all be, it'd be easy to make them accessible. Um, so, and again, we'd have a series of loops. So someone could walk the entire perimeter of the lawn. Someone else could just do a smaller loop in one area. Um, but it's a way of, it's where we see a lot of the park users coming together and intersecting. Someone walking from the parking to the sports field might pass through the lawn. Someone else going to the natural area might pass through the lawn, but it's that kind of that connecting area, but it has, it's not, um, it's different from like a natural meadow that you're not able to, you know, get out and play Frisbee in. So it has some, a little more use to it. Understood. And I know that um, the city did the yoga in the park, um, is that, are you thinking about those kinds of yoga? Oh, absolutely. That We see that more and more in the park, and especially the part of the lawn that's closer to the community center. 
you know, that might be an area where, you know, you break out, there's a class in the community center, it breaks out and has yoga um, outdoors and the lawn. Um, some of the more remote areas of the lawn might have uses that are more associated with, you know, some of the picnic areas or some of the other adjacent uses, but absolutely. Okay, and then the last comment I would make is, I'd like the versions of the dog park being a little bit further away from the community center. Um, I know that I can speak from personal experience. I know some folks have uh, severe allergies. Uh, so I, I couldn't tell the exact distance from the drawing, but just to have some spacing uh, for those who do have severe allergies. Uh, although I do like um, having another dog park and I feel like that is very much needed in the city as we only currently have one official one. Um, but I, I just question that particular proximity. And also if you're gonna potentially rent out the community center for special events, that might be another consideration. I will add, I think that's a great point. I will add that in the first two concepts where in plan view, it looks close to the community center, but in terms of elevation, because the community center is up on a hill, the dog park's more down slope. It's, it's fairly well separated, maybe vertically from the community center versus uh, horizontally. Um, but you're right, the concept three shows it really um, well separated from all of the other other uses. So that's, uh, I think, something to think about. Councilmember Ashton, are you finished? Got it. Councilmember Feinberg. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you to uh, Tom and for your wonderful presentation. You've given us a lot of things to think about and to Tim and this, all the staff who've put their hands and fingers on this and creativity. Um, one of my questions along the lines of council member Ashton and process is um, when you flip to the frame, please, that shows process after this, it's near your very end. Um, what, that's it, thank you. For the second round public engagement, where after tonight you'll have some direction and guidance, hopefully from, from all five of us, I would hope at that point we would have some um, guesstimate range of the fiscal impact of what you're coming up at the second round. Um, I know it would be a soft estimate, but at that point, I think both uh, the mayor and council and the public would want to know what is this that we will be shouldering both from the initial investment, but also as was mentioned, I think by council member Miles, the operations and management would be, it seems to me very different from concept one and concepts two and three just by the types and density of amenities. So that's my first one before I go through them. Um, I'm not sure, Tim, if you have the answer, if that was the intention or not, to have any kind of fiscal impact at that point. I don't know. I think it really depends on how much direction we get tonight, whether or not we can commit to saying, yes, we'll have fiscal impact for this next round with the community input or just by the time we come back to you. But yes, that would be our goal. Okay, thank, thank you very much. And then um, Madam Mayor, may I continue on with my comments about the different concept plans? Yeah, floor is yours. Okay, okay, I couldn't see you right now. I'm seeing the concepts from my perspective. Um, I'm gonna do it more from a perspective when I look through what I liked about each of the concepts, if that's all right with you. Um, so my, some of the notes that I wrote here um, on concept one, where you have the, the two number five picnic areas, and um, then you have the two purple parking, new parking areas. My comment was for any potential users of the smaller picnic area that's right in the corner there, since in all likelihood in a picnic area, you, you may be taking some small sporting activities for kids. You may be taking food, drink, um, things to barbecue, uh, if that's even going to be allowed there, but you're gonna be carrying a lot of things. 
the parking areas certainly seem accessible and usable for the larger picnic area down there. But for the smaller one, I thought it's too far away and that if we did something in that cluster, there needed to be some type of access for the smaller picnic area that for those carrying items or those who may be taking people with them who are in a wheelchair or a walker um, or crutches, it's just too far from the parking. That was just one of my comments. Um, in this concept and in all of them, I heard you talk, speak to the community center, um, but I, I take it when I looked at all these are existing, what I'm going to say clubhouse as we all know it, um, is the intent that it would be demolished and nothing would be remaining and we're starting from scratch? Or is the possibility that we um, renovate, keep some of the positive features that we have, including in my opinion, that wonderful deck area that's, that's constructed and the um, the kitchen facilities that are all there. So if Tim, you can speak to that because it never even references the existing communities of uh, the existing clubhouse. That the existing building is very limited. Um, so if I had a magic wand, we would delete that, build a new building right there, keeping the deck. We all love the deck. Uh, but that current clubhouse is, is very limited and the cart barn that's right behind it is just a shell. Um, but, you know, if that's the direction of mayor and council, we can see what we can do to repurpose it. It's, um, it's a limited facility. So question to you and to your consultants, would it be possible to save part of the existing community center and then into uh, clubhouse, excuse me, and then integrate it and build sort of like attached to it and using the land, natural land design of the community center. Is that a possibility or not? I would think so. Uh, anybody, Craig or anyone else who's on, want to speak to that? But I would think that's a possibility. Um, I would guess it'd be very difficult, depending on the size of the community center, to integrate something like that in there. And I think we would have to take that uh, question up with uh, an architect once they get that far. But usually, in my experience, it's very difficult to integrate an older facility like that. It's just not quite up to standard. It's just not going to be compatible. And uh, I, I would probably tend to say it'd be very difficult, but we could carry that thought forward to confirm that. And again, it, it depends upon the size, but my guess is going to be, it's going to be very difficult from my experience. Okay. Um, I'm only one of five. Um, I guess because there are some wonderful, such as the deck and the, the kitchen area. Um, if that's at all possible, I guess I would express my idea that would be if we can somehow salvage some of it and integrate it into a, a design, sort of like with a private residence where you integrate some of the good, the assets of the existing building and then you build on that. Um, I like the amphitheater in concept one, that's the smaller size. And in, in my opinion, I wasn't envisioning the large one as you showed in, um, I guess it was concept, the largest one that you were showing I'm sorry, it's it's hard to see uh, the 3,500 seat one in concept two. That's concept um, two. Right. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking close to your, <laughs> your, your three part. I have a large one in front of me, which thank you staff for the large one. It's great. Um, so for me, I would like a smaller amphitheater than what's on concept two. I would be more akin to something uh, like concept one, a smaller one, uh, or, or somewhere between one and three. Um, I do like the idea that the amphitheater is further away in concept one from the passive areas. I like the way you have kept those in the northern and the southern, south, 
western corner, I guess that is, and the eastern corners. I really like the way you did that. Um, but let me talk about the sports field and track. So I don't know where my colleagues may be on this. Um, I think it's driving some of the density. When I look at concepts two and three, I feel huddled. I feel crowded. I feel like we're trying to do everything for everybody. Um, and for sure, I would not want two sports fields. I think when you do that, it appears to me that you are necessi by necessity having to have more parking. And, and I think I've heard that from staff or from the consultant. And that wasn't the original intention. It was to be more of a passive park. So uh, for me, concepts two and three with the two sports fields are not something that I want to see. And actually, I'd actually prefer no sports fields. And I'll, I'll say why. A, driving the, um, it's driving more parking spaces, pervious parking in all likelihood, but not totally. But we've talked about preserving the environment. I'm concerned about the noise. Sports fields are a great um, activity, soccer fields. Notably, they're exceedingly popular, but they also draw large audiences, families. It's a great gathering, but they're very, they also, there's a lot of noise. And so I am concerned about the noise that would be generated for those who would be wanting to walk in that northern lawn section that you've been speaking about. I think having those sports fields would um, reverberate and not be in the keeping and tenor of what we actually talked about in the beginning. I'm concerned about the noise and what it does to the natural hab habitat with animals and birds. And we have heard that from some folks before. Um, and then lighting. I'm concerned if we have these sports fields, namely the soccer fields, folks are going to want them to be lighted. And I understand that. But that lighting is also contrary to the initial thought process from this as a more passive park and to enjoy the environment, the trees, the, the species. Um, so that's a concern to me, and I actually don't support the sports fields there. I'll probably be the first to come out and say it. Um, when I get to some of the, the second concept one, um, talk to the sports park. Oh, the, the third picnic area on concept two, which to me looks like um, a little bow tie on that one. Uh, I don't know what else to call it, but it's a real skinny one. And it doesn't seem very usable for me to for if it said, I think they said 30 to 50 people per picnic area. Um, if you get different family units, they're not going to be able to spread out. They're going to be on top of one another. Uh, just did not seem usable. So I would err on the side then of either just having two larger in some different configuration. I did like that the play area was was adjacent to all three. I think that's a good idea because I think families with younger kids would really like that, that they can have an area with a either a top lot or a little playground. I thought it was well thought out. Um, and let me just go to the third one and then I will stop. I'm sorry, I'm pulling out my, my little cheat sheet here. Uh, the amphitheater, I would prefer only one amphitheater and the smaller, as I said. Um, but generally, I would say I just feel too crowded and it's too dense. And so some things do not make me feel um, that I don't get the solemnity and tranquility that I would want in coming to this, um, to, to Redgate. And I'll stop there. The signage, I absolutely agree with my colleagues. We do have to have as much signage as possible. 
And as the Senior Citizens Commission has opined, please, with colors in the signage or paths and the size of the fonts that are readable for people with either visual challenges, as I see Mr. Chestnut and myself with glasses, or just any visual um, disability, regardless of age. So um, I, I'd like to just put a plug in for that for the seniors. And size of the community center would be my last thing. I wasn't envisioning a 30,000 foot square foot community center. And one of the thoughts I had about a community center that's great is we have the Rockville Swim and Fitness Center. Then we have many community centers that are associated with neighborhoods, whether they're Twinbrook, whether there's um, Thomas Farm is associated with an adjacent neighborhood. This could be a Rockville community center. And I say that with the idea there are some places in the city that don't have community centers. This could be one for everyone. And we would call it a Rockville gathering place community center. So I'm gonna make that pitch for it. Um, and I will stop there and thank you for your time. Madam Great. Mayor, could I ask Councilman Feinberg one clarifying question, please? Sure. Just wanted to make sure I understood you. When you were talking about the amphitheater, I heard you that with the the one amphitheater, you preferred the smaller or small list of the three. Did I hear you say that you did not support the idea of the second amphitheater? Need to unmute. I'd rather have one amphitheater. Okay. I, I just want to make sure I understood you. No, please. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Council Member Prashela. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd, I'd like to thank all my colleagues who have preceded me um, for your well-considered thoughts. Um, I'm going to say at a higher level, but I'll, I'll, I'll start by saying, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm probably more minimal, minimalist than um, anybody who's gone uh, before me. And what, first of all, I, I, if I had my preference, we'd leave it much like it is for about 10 years. And the reason I say that is it's a perfectly usable, great space right now. And, um, you know, I know we have so many capital projects uh, that are unfunded or underfunded. I just don't see spending a whole lot of money. And since it is really usable right now and people enjoy it, I would just leave it like it. And um, to me, these, these thoughts are, are down the road. But the, uh, here's where I'm coming from that um, even when it is developed, it should be minimally um, developed. I would build no additional extra parking. Right now, uh, if I read the charts right, we have 144 plus 175 spaces. That's 300 existing, 319 existing spaces, either currently in Redgate itself or in Six Taft Court. To me, that's that should be your maximum parking. And you know, then you start to think about, okay, within that parking, what kind of amenities could fit? I would I would not put in a community center. It's it's not really um, you know, it's it's nobody's neighborhood. Yeah. And and so even though I agree with some of my colleagues that um, well, I think. Councilmember Feinberg said it best, it's, it's nobody's neighborhood, but I wouldn't then say it should be a Rockville community center. I just say it shouldn't be a community center at all. Whenever you have something like a community center or sports or uh, a large amphitheater, for example, um, the the domino effects as as uh, Mr. Chestnut has already called it, uh, they, they start to build up. And it's not only the parking spaces, but you need, uh, you know, aisles to them. And you need then to consider stormwater management. Even realigning the road at Avery, while it has some, some justification for it, it's going to be hugely expensive. Um, if I were to put in a soccer field at all, it would be just north of Six Taft Court which is where the old driving range used to be, I would not put in lighting. 
Um, a small amphitheater would be okay in a three to 500 seat range, not two amphitheaters. So I, I, I think all of us have gone out there in preparation for uh, this event, this uh, agenda item. I went out there this afternoon for a few hours and walked most of Redgate. Uh, one of the things that struck me is the noise intrusion into the park from Norbeck, especially Avery, and to a lesser extent from Goody. And I, and I expect traffic to build up on Avery. So even though it's not as busy as Norbeck, it's, it's really right next to the park. And, and there is a car that um, had muffler issues and it just really resonated throughout the whole park. So I'm very skeptical about putting picnic areas, uh, passive areas, um, you know, anywhere near these roads. So to, to me, it's, it's really um, less is better. I would build up, I would not build it up, but I would refurbish the clubhouse. It's usable for meeting spaces. You might even be able to rent, rent some of the space out. Uh, I, I don't think we need anything more than that. Um, I did have a few questions just to help um, guide our discussion. One is, you know, approximately how big are Thomas Farm and Twinbrook Community Centers and even the Link Lincoln Park Community Center, just get an idea of square feet. And then um, how do you define evening? So uh, one with the parking at 6 Taft Court open up, would that be 5 p.m. or 6 p.m.? Uh, that kind of stuff. But I, I really, um, you know, do do as little as possible to make it useful for a few things. Uh, its its biggest asset is um, nature. Uh, even though you can say, for example, 82% um, of the park is passive, but you have to remember, as some of my colleagues have already mentioned, that it, you know passive versus active is not just um, a line on the map. You know the when you have active uses, for example, an amphitheater or um, sports, that kind of thing, that really does bleed into the natural areas. And um, you know, so so one of the big reasons we kept it a park was because of the outpouring of support to keep a natural park. And, and so to me, that's what we should do with, with perhaps a few additional things. So um, if I just get answers on how big uh, Thomas Farm, Twinbrook and Lincoln Park Community Centers are and, and when evening starts for parking on uh, Sixth Half Court, that'd be great. Thank you. Yes, sir. I can tell you that Thomas Farm Community Center is roughly 18,000 square feet. Uh, Chris or Steve for Twinbrook and Lincoln Park. Twinbrook is 13, approximately 13,000 square feet, and Lincoln is about 12,000 square feet. 12, yeah, 12,000. And then what time would be evening? <laughs> uh, well, if uh, uh, six staff court becomes occupied by city staff, it'll be five o'clock, 5.30. But I guess it would depend on the you know the other neighbors that we can use there if we're going to use their parking lots as well. Uh, with thanks to my colleagues, uh, I've learned a lot, and I'm um, just going to say what I think at this point. I think David Miles hit the nail on the head when it comes to my perspective, which is less is more, um, especially right now. Uh, Mark Persheila, Councilmember Persheila also hit the nail on the head when he said we have an awful lot of capital costs coming up. And I think one of the things that Rockville should do a little bit um, more efficiently is do something and finish it. So right now we're working towards the King Farm Farmstead. Let's get that done. And then that will be an amenity that will serve the city and, and our community very well. And I'd like to see us put the second floor on the Lincoln Park Community Center, or at least give Lincoln Park the full-size basketball court that they've been asking for for as long as I've been on this um, council. And there's other things that I think we need to be taking care of with regards to our CIP projects. So with that said, um, I think there's an opportunity here to keep a park as passive as possible for now and then grow it as the needs become apparent and, and as the money is there. I absolutely support keeping the clubhouse, upgrading it. I think that debt cost eight or $10,000. I, 
I remember when Billy Casper did it in lieu of doing some other things that uh, the council had requested, and I think it's a great deck. It's solid, it has a beautiful vista, uh, looks over a beautiful lawn, so I would keep that now upgraded as necessary. The kitchen, I think, could definitely use some work, having been in there a few times, um, and allow that to be meeting space. Um, if Redgate does become the Arboretum as the overall thought, which personally I think would be wonderful, and, and I will tell those who don't know, I'm very familiar with Cox Arboretum in Dayton, Ohio. My mother was one of the um, founders of that park, and I remember being there often as a child. And it is a little bit smaller, I mean a little bit bigger, it's 174 acres to our 140, but it's all Arboretum. It's all a learning center. They've used their uh, clubhouse, their center, as an educational place. Uh, students from all the schools go there to learn about sustainable um, gardening, sustainable living, uh, plant um, species conservation. So I think that's an opportunity for us with our um, recent resolution that we, we really want to do this and, and teach this to the next generation in the city. Um, I, t I like the idea of, a, of an amphitheater. I'm not sure about the size, and so I was hoping staff could give us comparisons um, because I can't tell what 500 versus 1,500 versus 3,500 is in terms of the magnitude. Are we talking about Wolf Trap? Are we talking about the band shell up in Poolsville? I want to understand that. To that point, on page 29, on the um, concepts that you sent us, on the top right is exactly the kind of a our, um, amphitheater that I was thinking of with the seating set into the lawn, into the hill, so that it's very natural and fits right in. Um, but that's just my, my personal opinion. Um, the other thing I, I was interested in is the connectivity. And we got an email today about connecting to Rock Creek um, Park Trail, which I absolutely agree. Safe passage on Norbeck Road. Councilmember Prochello is absolutely right. That traffic is, is very much and will probably get a little bit more. And there is no transit to Redgate. So we've got to take that into consideration. I have mentioned before, and I'm curious, did we consider, did you consider undergrounding a path under 28, Norbeck Road, between Redgate and Glenview? Because then we could take advantage of Glenview's parking as well and connect neighborhoods, which this would then connect to, um, east, to east Rockville, Lake and uh, Twinbrook, excuse me, and over into that section of the city. So was that a consideration at all? You know, it absolutely came up, Madam Mayor, and uh, the group decided that was a little bit beyond the scope of what we've been charged with, but that absolutely came up, and of course we'd love to see that happen as well. So, um, not to be contradictory, Mr. Chestnut, but I don't think it's beyond the scope because I think as we think about connectivity and we're looking at six Taft Court, it's absolutely part of what we should be thinking about in terms of making it possible for bikes and people to get through to other places. So I'd love to see that looked at. And we know that they just did two undergrounds on 355 um, down at Cedar Lane. Um, which gives us a great opportunity to look at what's been done and see if we couldn't get some help from the state on that. Um, I was very concerned about the electric costs and water sewer costs. If we were to build this up the way any of the concepts really are driven, we would have to do major, major upgrades to water, sewer, and electricity. And that concerned me a little bit in terms of just upfront costs. Um, we got a lot of emails this afternoon about soccer fields and I understand that there's a, a need for fields in the city. Um, I noticed that there wasn't a cross-country area on here, and I'm hoping that that could be built in. They don't need paths for cross-country. Um, I've been very pleased to have been to several of the meets over at Glenview, and I like the way that works. It's just in the natural habitat, and these kids running all over the place, uphill and down. Uh, what else did I write? Um, community gardens, I, I think there is a need for community gardens. Whether it ends up going here or on the Glenview site, I don't, I don't know which is better, but I think that could be a real, a real opportunity for us. Um, the dog park, I, I think we do need a dog park. It looks huge to me. I no longer have a dog, so maybe that's, that's why, 
but I would definitely put the dog park away from where people are gathering, seating and sitting and eating and, and whatnot, just for noise, if nothing else, and the opportunity for people to just be with their uh, companions or, or have their, their human companions. Um, and uh, there was one other comment I was going to make. Um, I like the access off of Taft Court. I think that was smart. I think it's a good thing. And if a soccer field or um, track area ever comes, then that is exactly the place it should go. I think that makes, makes great sense. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. But, but I really do um, agree that with both Councilmember Prashela and Councilmember Dr. Miles that starting out slowly is probably the best way for us to really gauge the need and then to be able to afford what we want to do going forward. Councilmember Dr. Miles. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I certainly echo your uh, comments and those of my colleagues, uh, particularly Councilmember Prashela. The one thing um, I would add in terms of an amphitheater um, in line with the comments I made earlier was to do something that, again, start small if, if we were to have one. But if it were to be built, build it in such a way that it can be expanded if the need arose. Um, um, so just kind of, you know, anything that we do do, uh, again, make it small and then make it in such a way that it could be expanded if a future mayor and council decided on it. The only other comments I, I would have is that if there is to be a community center, um, um, again, I think it's something that we should think very hard about. But in terms of um, where we were talking about in terms of setting an example in light of our um, comments on the co climate action plan, this is um, certainly in line with our colleague, Council Member Ashton, talking about EV charging stations. I was very impressed when I visited the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad site out in Dorchester County, um, Maryland, on the way home from Ocean City. It's a building uh, through the um, U.S. Park Service where it's essentially a zero energy building. I mean, the, the toilets, for example, um, I think uh, use minimal water. It's, you know, solar and all that stuff. So we could be an example, kind of like how Thomas Farm is with some of its features. I think, I don't know if Thomas Farm is geothermal energy or not. Uh, but I certainly know that it has uh, pervious pavement. So making it a model of, uh, of the type of buildings that we would like to have in the future if we were to build something there. Again, that's a big if. Um, I also want to echo the comments of my colleague, Councilor Feinberg, with regard to sports fields, which is why I'm a minimalist. I do think that um, if they were to be any, I would, I would certainly ask that they're not, they're not have lights, uh, only because I want to be mindful of our neighbors. Um, if, again, that's a big if, if there were to be fields there. Um, but again, keeping it accessible is, is hugely important. Um, and I think I'll, I'll end it there. Thank you. Councilmember Dr. Miles, you reminded me of two things I meant to say. One is I completely agree with your idea of the amphitheater starting out small and then could potentially grow. And so the, the um, one that I like on packet page 29, top right, would fit right in and... Um, having been at Redgate both as a golfer and as a walker, there is a section of, <clears throat> and I don't remember the, um, the green and the tea, um, Chris, you probably do, but it's a long Norbeck road, and it, you start out up high with your tee shot, and you end up on a green that's down below. Do you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember the number. But anyway, the, the topography is already there to build something into the, into the natural setting. So, th so I did want to come... Um, comment on that. The other thing was, as um, somebody who's been very familiar with MRSA, um, our daughter got it playing um, on a turf field and having done a lot and a real problem with it, um, I think I would not support a turf field. Um, number two, that would also, I think, put us in a, in a different group than Rockville sports, which I love and my children all played through. Uh, Rockville Rec, and I, I would like to keep our neighborhood community feeling with Rockville Sports should we go that direction, but I, I would not support a turf field um, at Redgate. I, yeah. And I saw another hand. I'm not sure who I saw. Councilmember Ashton, thank you. Thank you. I heard some folks opine on the garden, uh, the community garden. I think, Madam Mayor, you also agreed on the concept of the community garden. I just wanted to see if there was other support for that. And I think this would be our first on the east side of Rockville, based on discussions with staff. Councilmember Prashela. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I certainly support the concept and reality of a community garden there. I, I, I would have that 
over a dog park any day. Uh, I'll remind people that if, if we want it to be natural, dogs and dog noise scare the heck out of critters, especially birds. And, um, you know, so, so I'd be very careful the dog park and its placement if there is one. Um, and, and the noise and the lighting is all good. I'll, I'll just add something to the amphitheater discussion. There was something in the brief book on um, the stage being constructed in a certain way that it could be used for more than just performances. And to me, that's a great spot for outdoor board and commission meetings, you know, and, and maybe this is just a pandemic comment, but, um, you know, a lot of these boards and commissions don't want to meet inside anymore, at least for the time being. So, you know, if it's covered in a way that um, can survive a, a, a rain and still have a meeting, that'd be great. Uh, maybe not a hurricane, but, um, you know, that, that's the idea. I, I just want to make a few other comments. Um, first of all, just remind people, um, all the open areas in Redgate are open because they used to be fairways or greens, and they're not natural open areas. If, if Redgate had never been a farm, that would be just really thick forest with thickets and briars and everything else. So um, one of the things you can have um, when you create new forest out there, it's really a great exercise in what is known as biological succession. And, um, you know, uh, an open area would would, uh, you know, first of all, probably be populated by certain species of trees. And as they grew up and over 20, 30 years, other species would come in and, and different kinds of uh, fauna would, would habitate as, as these areas um, succeeded in a biological sense. So that's certainly something if you're going to go that way to um, investigate. And you, you might get a botanical club or something like that to, to really help out with that. And that, that's it for me. Thank you. Councilmember Ashton. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the placement of the amphitheater, let's say we were to go with, you know, the varying sizes that you've heard today uh, in terms of potentially building up and phasing over time if we decide to go that route. Um, I would just say the placement should be such that uh, you can add the garden picnic area. I think it worked out very nicely, um, even at um, what we did with Redgate Live, that people were able to bring their picnic chairs and, you know, uh, blankets and be able to sit out. So I just wanted to, if we're thinking about the placement, allowing for, you know, an increased number of people to be able to enjoy the space, should there be an activity. Um, I did also want to uh, note that if we do the, um, I am not opposed to having some sort of uh, running area or athletic area. Um, I, I would like to know more about that. I don't love the placement, as I mentioned earlier on, with it right in the midst of the natural area. I was curious as to whether there was any other place, if it were to happen, to be on the right side and away from the natural, beautiful walking paths, et cetera. Um, and if we were to have it, I was also thinking that we would not have lights uh, that would um, potentially, you know, be in contrary to what what's available with the uh, natural topography and the birding, et cetera. Uh, and then I was also curious if my colleagues would support something that was educational around the birding display. Councilmember Feinberg. Sure, I would actually consider that as part of the signage and education of this whole project. So sure, absolutely, that would be incorporated as well as with the different kinds of flowers to highlight certain ones. That's part of the whole learning that's intergenerational too. Um, so absolutely. I, I would as well, it's part of an arboretum. So I would, I would go along with all of that. Um, and you, you said something else. Oh, Councilmember Ashton, can I just clarify? Are you saying that you're not sure that the, if there is a sports field, if, if, that it should go over to the left near Taft Court? Yeah, I was curious about it because it, 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 I've been out to that space several times and there is a nice loop around there. I was just, it, it may be because there are limitations on the topography, um, but I was just curious about any, had they explored any other place on the right side 
that was not, I feel like the left side of Redgate, when you look at the clubhouse, that side is really a natural use path from what I've also observed people using, um, having also participated in some of the walks that um, what were done over the summer, et cetera, and fall. Um, that space is really uh, well used and, and by birders, by uh, people who are doing walking paths. I was just curious if there was any other place on the right side so that was more on the clubhouse side and less disruptive. So if I could just jump in, I think, if so, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the old um, driving range site. Is that right? Chris is nodding yes. And so then I'm going to say another statement that I think this is um, probably an area that is not conducive to regrowth because of a lot of other reasons that I won't mention, you all can mention. But am I right about that? They had a lot of trouble getting grass to go to grow there. You are correct about that, Madam Mayor. And uh, another factor, just uh, I'm sure Mayor and Council are all, are all aware of it, but along the left-hand side of the picture, if you will, the west side, there are no residences. Right. So having the ac active play there, the, the, not only the flat ground, already level ground, but it was also the fact there's no residential component. That's a great comment. I, I forgot about that too. The trails that are there now, because they're the old cart paths, they come up and bend right back into the park area before the um, driving range area. Am I right about that? Yes. At, and the driving range area is a little bit off the beaten path, no pun intended, um, over okay. closer to both Sixth Half Court and the city's uh, Rothgeb facility. Correct. Okay. That's what I thought. Councilmember Ashton. So if no grass can grow there, then are you proposing turf? I'm <laughs> concerned about that. I am not <laughs> proposing turf. Uh, you, you, will never, <laughs> you will never hear me recommend artificial turf. Wait, we we so, will grow grass. Yeah, we'll find yeah. a way. We'll dig it up and start over. And Madam Mayor, I, don't, I, I know you don't want to say what you're alluding to, what, uh, but is it safe, that land, for children to be on? <laughs> yeah, I think what happened, and staff can correct me, but I think what happened was because of the Rothgib facility, that might be some of the salt runoff or some of the um, runoff from maintenance. Am I right about that? I refer to someone who's been here longer than me, Chris or Steve. Hi, this is uh, Steve. I think part of what uh, probably occur there is when um, the old salt barn was demolished. I believe some of the topsoil was brought over, or the soil was brought over there, so there was a fairly high salt content in it, and uh, Ray Evans had difficulty growing grass in sections. I don't think there's any hazard associated with it. It's, as the mayor said, we could regrade it, reseed it, and establish turf. Thank you, Mr. Mater. Um, Ray Evans, that's a name I haven't heard in a while, so thank you for bringing that up. Councilmember Prashel, I saw your hand. Yeah, uh, just to mention that even the old driving range would require significant regrading. It's, it's not flat at the moment, um, flat like a soccer field would require. So I, I'm sure it can be groomed to be what, what people want. Um, again, if you should go in at all. Agreed. And that is correct. And I might add that, you know, that is probably the, the flattest, one of the flattest areas of the site, even though it's not flat and requires grading. And in, in um, comment to um, Councilwoman Ashton's question about a field further to the right, the, the right side of the site has a lot more topographical challenges. So a field would require more grading. The, the areas that we are showing are the areas where a field would work best from minimal impacts to the to the landform, the natural landform. Thank you, Councilmember Ashton. Uh, where you have the concept uh, for the amphitheater on concept one, um, is that, let's say you were to do an event there, um, I think hometown holidays is coming up and I think staff is proposing that, does that space accommodate Hometown, could it accommodate the hometown holidays as you all suggest? Not as we have had hometown holidays in the past. That would be uh, in, in the past we've had multiple stages and the one main stage. Um, 
So we're already talking about downsizing and scaling it back, which is fine. Um, but no, that stage as envisioned, um, if I can read the, the 1500 seat amphitheater would not accommodate what has been our main stage. But it could in the new format. Council member Prashela. And just a comment about major events. If you start having major events like hometown holidays and whatever, then you have the parking issue all over again. Because you have to, or you run a lot of shuttles or whatever, but it, you, you just don't have the the capacity, you know, in right. that sense. So, and and let's let's just be pl blunt about it. Only very few people will bike or ride to this as a percentage of people who come there. It'll be uh, 95, 99% car driven people to, to use Redgate. And um, that's, and that's why I'm so hard personally on the parking. I don't, I just don't want to see a whole lot of cars out there and I don't want to see um, all the impacts on the, on the natural state of the place. Council member Ashton. So um, where you have the amphitheater on concept one, could you accommodate what you did last time with the that's what I'm that's what I'm asking you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Councilmember Prashela. Uh, just a question. Um, I remember going out to a few performances this past summer and they were by the pond and and why um, to me that was a perfectly good place. And by the way, the further away from trees and mosquitoes the better off you are for a, an amphitheater so so uh, wouldn't that be a better place in some sense where we had belly cal what is his name um, i can't kelly bell and, a, and the band i believe that's what you see in concept three council Actually, concept. concept three, yeah. it, um, the amphitheater was down a little bit more. The, if I remember correctly, the pond was off to our right, and it was, the stage was down just a little bit. I think, if I remember right. Yes, ma'am. These are still concept drawings. So yeah, right. yeah. I yeah. I just was helping. That's the general area. Yes. I had one other thought about the road going through and having a secondary entrance, which I would agree to, but not having a road go through. I think that that takes away from the safety. Um, you can't monitor everybody all the time, and some don't know how to monitor themselves. But I would definitely not have a road that connected. Um, I would have a road that went to the parking, and then a road that came off of Taft and went to that parking, um, or an access, whatever you want to call it. But it concerns me greatly to have a road that goes all the way through the park. Councilmember Ashton. Madam Mayor, that's the part where we had the gates opening and closing, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. I agree with that concern. I saw Councilmember Prashela and then quickly Councilmember David Miles. So, Council Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to bring up a related issue. Even, even if we don't do anything major for a long time, uh, I, I think we have to come to grips with what it's actually going to cost uh, to uh, staff the park properly. And, and there are safety issues out there given its extent and the paths being, um, you know, so distant visually speaking from the clubhouse. So, um, you know, I, I think even if we don't do any major projects right away, I, I think it, it needs, we need to have staff out there. And I'm just wondering if the staff have thought about that. Oh, we've thought about it, Councilman. Um... <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have any staff available to serve in that role, but uh, yes, we have absolutely thought about it as more and more people have found, refound the park. Are you putting in, just to follow up on that question, are you all putting in for more FTEs in the budget? We did, not for that purpose though, not for this year. Okay, thank you. Council Member Dr. Miles and then Council Member Ashton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanna be clear, the reason, there I didn't see any gates for concept one or three, but certainly one, which is one I was probably most interested in because it was minimalist. Is there a need for gates? Uh, I just, I'll, I'll just end it there. That's all. 
not as we envision concept one functioning, no, sir. Councilmember Ashton. Thank you. I would also just note, no matter what we do, and it sounds like this is going to be a very long range project, I do think that we need to figure out how we can in short term activate the clubhouse so people can use restrooms and have access and use that space. Um, this seems like this is very far off, but I, I would hope to, as we look at the fiscal opportunities to see what it would cost to at minimum renovate the clubhouse and make that activated as well as look at um, you know, some of the smaller steps like the garden area, um, how to make it more green and some of the access points that we discussed. Sure, we can do that. I would support that as well, including upgrading the kitchen and maybe then we could get a vendor to come in to lease it and run some sort of a, you know, a, a, a restaurant. Sitting out on the deck and eating is, is lovely and people are looking for that kind of opportunity all over the city. So I think that could be a real asset for us. Council member Feinberg. Sure. Thank you. Which made me triggered my thought. Um, when you come back to us, would it be possible to show a phased approach so that let's say we want to do, um, either refurbish the clubhouse or do some of the picnic areas so that people could at least enjoy that. Uh, what would it cost to do some of the picnic areas or playgrounds? And if we had a phased in approach, that may make it more palatable and affordable. Yes, ma'am. We had always been anticipating a phased in approach. So that is an easy yes. Um, we've got some work to do after tonight. So we will uh, uh, be, be downsizing uh, at least two of the options. Um, and, and coming up with a modified third one uh, to take out to the community. And absolutely, we will come to you with uh, some, some ideas on phasing and, and costs. One more idea. Um, a community member just um, sent me a note that it's the 16th hole that I was trying to remember the hole uh, the, for the amphitheater space that I was thinking of. But also, what about using volunteers? could cut down on some of our staffing costs, but what if we use volunteers in exchange for um, use of, you know, use of the place? So that might be a way to do it. And we have a lot of people who love to volunteer in the city. We, I think we have one of the highest um, numbers of volunteers of any of our municipalities. So that might be a way to help with costs. Council Member Feinberg. Sure, um, just because I'm not sure where we're really landing, I, I heard Tim say we would um, scale back some of these concepts, but would there be any going out not showing any sports fields? Because I'm not sure um, where we even as a body are on that. If there are any of us who would say we prefer at least one concept plan to go out without sports fields. Council Member Ashton. I think given the community feedback that we heard on email that there should be at least one option that considers it, maybe just the one and not the two. Um, but I, I know that we received a lot of emails to mayor and council, especially today with people wanting us to consider an option like that. I would say if there is one, the least intrusive as possible and thinking about light, you know, not having lighting at night. I just, that was something I, I heard loud and clear from some people who wrote in today. Councilmember Dr. Miles and then Councilmember Feinberg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would support having a plan that did not include a field being one of the three that's considered. Um, just to have a range of things, having zero fields, one field versus two fields would be something to look at. That's all. Councilmember Feinberg. Sure. And I, I do acknowledge we got a lot of emails today um, that we're all speaking to, um, or many overwhelming majority were speaking to the sports fields. But I also note that this was a point in time um, and that I've heard from others that there are other groups, friends of Redgate, who are also equally about to send us many emails. So I, I think it's a snapshot today, but I wouldn't say necessarily um, because I don't know how representative that is. And that's why I'm wanting at least and suggesting at least one version that would keep to um, 
a more a really minimalist approach and that we've heard from some when we began this conversation months and months ago who did not envision any sports fields. I see um, thumbs up from Councilmember Prashela, and I'm going to add my voice to that option as well to, to have one that only speaks to what the majority here said and, uh, you know, just start out with it the way it is with some paths and whatnot and a phased in and maybe um, upgrades to the clubhouse, but having maybe only two concepts this time so that people can really get their arms around something. And maybe the second one does show, you know, one um, field. But I, I agree with Councilmember Feinberg in that people need to put their address on their comments because we don't always know who's a city resident and, and who's not. So um, I would just say maybe two and one definitely with no field. Councilmember Ashton. Yeah, I was going to say one with one field, one with no field. I'm not sure we heard enough support here for one with two fields. Um, so th that was what I was going to clarify, just with and without. That probably helps staff, too, to only have to deal with two, two plans. So other comments or questions? Madam Mayor? Yes. Yes, in that same vein, uh, I would suggest, based on what I've heard, that perhaps one of the two or three concepts, whatever it turns out to be, also not feature a newly constructed recreation center. Just to, again, just show some contrast. I think you heard that as well. Yes, I agree with you. And I'm seeing thumbs up from Councilmember Prashela, Councilmember Dr. Miles, Councilmember Feinberg, Councilmember Ashton. So we're all good with that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chestnut, did you yeah, all thank you. get yeah, what you needed? The only amenity that I still had a question on, there was a, a, some conversation about location and, and parking access, but the playgrounds. I think I've heard direction on all of the other um, amenities but I'm not sure I understand where you guys are falling on the playground concepts. Council member, Dr. Miles. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I, I think um, as, as was mentioned, we have a fair number of parking spots now. Um, so I, I, I think the consensus among some is, you know, for a minimalist approach, I'm, I can support a playground being part of one of the design elements. Um, I, I also agree with our colleague, Councilman Prashela, that I would really not like to, if, if there are already several hundred parking spots, I think, as he mentioned, um, I don't know that we would necessarily need more. Um, however, I do want to be mindful. So if staff thinks that if we had a, um, a playground, so I think you all recently did one at Elwood Smith, which is a reasonable size. Uh, the parking lot, I think, is only like, I don't know, 10 10, 15 spots there uh, seems to be adequate, um, but I'll defer to judge. But I think having a playground as one of the concepts, perhaps the one that's all more built up would be advisable. That's all. Council member um, Ashton. Um, I'm open to having one concept that has the playground, uh, thinking about multi-generational, um, but I like the one, if we were to do one, to consider that it's like, not in front of the community center as it is and concept one, but maybe uh, more towards behind or around it uh, on concept three. That's helpful, thank you. Council member Feinberg. Sure, I would definitely like to see one um, with a playground. Uh, and I also like the idea that it might be, if, if possible, near the picnic area, because I think that adjacency for families, intergenerational uh, families using a playground, um, I, I think that's realistic for how people use uh, picnic areas. A picnic shelter and playground area. Um, I would also, I didn't hear shelter though, Mr. Chestnut, I didn't hear that word yet. Um, but I would also say that my preference would be if there is to be a playground that it look more like 25, page 25, that it be more nature based to fit in with the overall theme of the Arboretum. Just my suggestion. I did see another hand. I'm sorry. I don't know who did it. I just saw something go up. Councilmember Ashton, I apologize. I was going to say if it is by, if we are going to do the picnic areas, I do support uh, making it so that families can be near um, the playground. And I'm seeing some thumbs up. So playground picnic area combo. Awesome. 
Councilmember Feinberg. Sure, and just, just to pull it a little bit, when I had initially started speaking, I don't know necessarily if you have that skinny little one um, that I mentioned before. I think that's in concept two. Um, maybe you can get away with two, <coughs> excuse me, with two play areas or two, um, two picnic areas and have some natural division so that um, if it were multiple units trying to use a playground, they can use them together, but have some privacy. And I am concerned about the access because in the one that I spoke to, that other um, picnic area did not have any accessibility. It was too far from the parking. Mm -hmm. Well, that's gonna be part of the challenge for the consultant um, with minimal um, uh, drive roads, driveways, um, to, to get people to the picnic areas, but we will come up with something. Well, Councilmember Feinberg? Yeah, the only thing is, Tim, the, I'm underscoring the access for those um, who are physically challenged or visually challenged, um, that we've got to make sure it's accessible for people who may be in wheelchairs or walkers or a temporary cast on a soccer player. Um, you know, anything like yeah. that. Exactly. So maybe the playground and, and picnic area go up closer to the Avery Road entrance or off the Taft Road entrance, you know, that fits in nicely with the pond on one end and the accessibility. So, okay. Anything else? Council Member Ashton. I had mentioned some of the green elements like solar canopy potentially, or um, I, I heard that Council Member Miles agreed with it, but I wasn't sure if others did. I see thumbs up. Everybody had thumbs up at one point or another on that idea. And the EV chargers as well. All right, are we finished with this work session? I, I believe so. Thank you very much for your time and your input. Thank you all.